Hello and welcome to A Little Crafting. My name is Annie and I am recording this from Surrey in the UK which is where I live with my husband and cat. Um, this is my bi-weekly podcast where I talk about all the things I've been making over the last couple of weeks although it's been a bit longer since then. I mostly talk about knitting, weaving, sewing and more recently yarn dyeing although not for a few episodes um, at the moment but in terms of general admin you can find me on Instagram as a underscore little underscore crafting on Ravelry as Ankiwoo and today is Sunday the 5th of December so it is super dark outside and I've got the daylight lamp on and it is quarter to five in the evening because my parents called and I left it a bit late to start recording. Um, I haven't been recording more recently so I think I missed one episode two weeks ago um, because unfortunately I managed to catch Covid. Um, if you're watching this in the future it is 2021 um, and I caught the Delta variant rather than the Omicron one as far as I know. Um, the yeah so I was not very well for a couple of weeks it wasn't too bad it was like a bad cold and then I kind of lost a lot of energy doing things um so I couldn't talk very much because talking made my voice kind of go and I was generally very frustrated and lying on the sofa obviously doing knitting a lot of the time um but yeah so I'm back working from home and um, getting there I think. I think I'll leave it another week before I go climbing because I don't want to completely set myself back by doing something very very energetic and then realise that it was a bad idea and have to kind of sleep for the rest of the day. I was going to save that for life stuff at the end but um, that's why I haven't been around for a little while. I haven't stopped podcasting, I just needed a break to let my voice and my energy come back um, over that period. Um, so yeah, let's get started with some actual crafting content then. Um, so uh, this is a cardigan that I knit earlier in the year. It is the Mosaic Cardigan by Irene Lynn. Um, and it is basically like a big hug and um, I chose to knit it in Durerum Natura Gilead, um in, I can't remember the colours but I'll pop them in the description below. Um, I'm pretty sure this is Poivre Blanc, um, this is probably Joyland if I remember correctly. Um, and it's kind of a kimono style cardigan um, with this lovely mosaic colour work on the sleeves and on the bottom as well um, and I thoroughly enjoyed knitting this it took a lot of yarn because it is enormous um, as you can tell but it is so lovely to just throw on when I'm not feeling so well where, or when I need to feel warmer um, and I'm super happy that I knit it earlier this year to start wearing it for winter now whilst it's getting very cold outside in the UK. Um, so that is what I'm wearing. Um, I forgot to say welcome back to anyone who follows me regularly and welcome to anyone who is newly watching this episode. Um, I'm really pleased that I am kind of reaching lots of people and that you're enjoying the content I'm making. Um, and if you are new I would really appreciate it if you subscribed um, just because it helps me with my visibility in general um, on YouTube so that I can be recommended to people who are likely to enjoy what I'm doing. Um, so let's get on to what I have been knitting over the last couple of re weeks rather than what I've knit in the past. Um, so first of all I have a couple of finished objects as you can imagine. Um, I have been continuing to knit hats despite having already sent off my box of hats to Hats for the Homeless. Um, so I actually had a commission off the back of my little charity drive um, from my uncle and I knit him 
this hat which is the Bankhead by Susie Gourlay which I absolutely love as a pattern it is kind of my go-to pattern for a simple hat and um, this one's in two colours he actually spotted one that he liked in the selection that I was selling for charity on eBay and um, it is in Erica Knight Wild Wool um, in both the light grey and the dark grey colours can't remember the names again but I'll try and remember to add them to the description below for you um this is an absolutely fantastic pattern and essentially my uncle has a really big head <laughs> so the one that I was selling would have been too small and was actually bought by my second cousin I think um so he wanted one the same um just to fit his head so I have finished that off um, it took me about three days, I think, to knit this one, um, so not too bad, but obviously I haven't really been doing that much otherwise in the last three weeks. Um, so that is that hat. I do quite enjoy um, using this wool. It's interesting. So it's actually got tencel or like nettle um, fibre within it with the wool as well, um, but it looks kind of like a single ply yarn. Um, hopefully you can see that from there the way that it knits up it looks quite like a single ply but it does have the nettle fiber in there so I'm hoping it will be quite robust um, in terms of the wear and it's got a bit of a halo as well um, so it's quite fluffy um, even though it's yeah wool and nettle um, so yeah I hope he likes wearing that I, I will find out from him whether it is a good yarn in terms of the wear. It is quite soft, um, but it's not what I would say is merino soft. Um, so it's, it's still a little bit prickly, um, but fingers crossed he will enjoy that and I'll be sending that up to him in Scotland very soon. Um, and just to go into a bit more detail about the hats that I was selling on eBay. So I think I sold half of the ones that I had up for sale. Um, I will probably put the others up another time. Um, and I was doing that for charity. So for both Alzheimer's Research and for the Stroke Association, I was splitting them um, between the different hats. Uh, just because those are... Um, charities that are important to me at the moment as um, my grandmother has Alzheimer's and um, my other grandma passed away a few years ago from a stroke as well um, so I wanted to kind of honour them by using those charities and donating money raised from the hats to those causes. Um, if anyone wants to contact me because you're interested in any of the hats that I had up for sale and they are not there anymore um, just pop me a message on Instagram and I will point you in the direction of a Just Giving page and I'm happy to send the um, the hats out accordingly um, but thank you so much also to those of you who bought hats I'm really pleased that I kind of reached some others um, aside from my family and friends um, and hopefully you'll really enjoy them when they get to you again slightly delayed because of you know the infection of the house I didn't want to send anything out when I was ill so um as not to avoid kind of infecting anyone else as well um, so yes, that is another hat ticked off my list um, and I have also finished a little baby hat um, again this is for a colleague's baby who was born at the end of November I think or middle of November can't remember 100% the last few weeks have been a bit of a blur um, but this is The Beloved by Selene Croix-Laurier I think is the way that you say it I'm always... Um, fumbling that name despite being half French um, but this is in Debbie Bliss Cash Merino Aran this is the coral colourway and this is my one of my go-to hats and yarns for um, baby knits um, and I can tell you the consistency of the yarn if I have that yarn right here um, so this one Oh, no, that's not got the ball band on it, but I've got some blues that I'm going to use to knit up some more of these for some friends, little boys, um, because they have outgrown the ones that I have knit for them already. Um, so this is 55% wool, 33% acrylic and 12% cashmere, and it's a Debbie Bliss Cash Merino Aran. 
and you can get this from Love Crafts in the UK. I think Debbie Bliss is exclusive to there. Um, and yeah, that was the, the coral colour that I knit up. But yeah, I do have quite a lot more to knit um, child size hats um, in this pattern because it is just a really great pattern for that. It comes in a lot of sizes actually. I have knit one adult version, um, but I really like the way that the seed stitch looks on this little hat um it's absolutely fantastic and this yarn is really stretchy so it even though i've knit the kind of newborn size or the small baby size um i think it fits for quite a while because of that stretch um but yeah it's very very cute and i've encouraged my mum to knit one of these um for her charity project as well so she's been enjoying the pattern too um, so definitely recommend that one. It is a free pattern, as is the Bankhead hat as well. Um, so those are the only finished objects at the moment, but I have been knitting a lot of other things. So moving on to works in progress. Um, I have been knitting on my husband's sweater quite a bit um, because it needs to be finished by Christmas, which is not that far away now in 20 days. Um, and I am knitting the Cotswolds Henley by Megan Babin. Um, and apologies, I've got a bit of clinking going on because of my needle holder. So I will take that off. Um, this is kind of a bottom up raglan sweater. Um, it, sorry, not raglan, a bottom up Cotswold Henley um, or Henley sweater. Um, so it goes from the rib at the bottom and then you've got texture detail at either side and then a different kind of basket weave texture in the centre. Hoping you can see that nicely. Um, and I have got to the point where I have separated for the sleeves um, and I'm doing the back first. So I've got the front on a, um, a wire and I am knitting the back um part so up the kind of top of the back section um i blocked this section because i wanted to check that it would fit my husband before i carried on um but it's perfect so i'm hoping the final result will be exactly right for his size um i measured it against another of his sweaters just to make sure as well um, so yeah, I'm happy with my progress so far. It is quite slow going because it is t all over texture. So you don't really get a break. Well, you get one row break where you will knit all the way round. Um, but I'm definitely enjoying it. And, you know, I've got the pattern in my head, so I don't really need to refer it to it anymore, except now that I'm doing something a bit different because it's knit back and forth at the top of the sweater so that you can do the shaping for the armholes and I guess the neck later on. Um, so yeah, making good progress definitely. This is knit in Durerum Natura Gilead, which is exactly the same yarn that I knit this out of, except it's a different colour. So this one is, let's check, um, Cedre, which is this lovely kind of mottled green that so Dorero Natura Gilia it's a an organic merino from France um, and it is one of my go-to yarns for sweaters I have about four more sweaters quantities of it um, a couple for me and another one potential for my husband I realized yesterday when looking through my stash of Gilead that I have bought quite a lot of this I actually bought 700 grams and a lot of it is still in my bag um so i don't think i'll need that much more because i think i'm probably what two thirds the way through maybe a bit less than that i've still got the top and then the two sleeves mm, i don't know roughly that but i think i've only used a couple of hundred grams of yarn so a couple of hundred more and i should be good um but yeah, I'll see how I get on and I might end up making an accessory or something else for my husband with the leftover yarns. Or alternatively doing a de-stash and seeing if anyone else needs it. Um, yeah, so that's where I am. I am hoping that by the time I record next, I will have finished this to be able to show you the finished object. Ready for Christmas. 
I am keeping this in my antler and acorn bag, um, which is jungle themed with the lion on the front. Um, antler and acorn currently isn't selling anything on Etsy. I think they're preparing a new studio um, for the new year. So I'm hoping that sh they'll be selling once again very soon. Um, potentially with their own website but I will link to them in the description box below so that you can see kind of the statement that they made on their page and potentially any updates to their shop but this is definitely the best project bag that I have and I really love it I want to get a few more um in the long run <laughs> I have realized I have a limit of sweater size project bags so if I knit more than a couple of sweaters I kind of run out of space um for them so it would be good to have a couple more um, but yeah that is whip number one and I am knitting this on my higher higher sharp interchangeable set probably not worth me telling you what size because I have to go down needle sizes quite a bit I'm a very very tight knitter uh, but I have an interchangeable higher higher sharp set that I use for most of my knitting projects and I highly recommend uh, there you go so that is whip number one um, the next one I have actually had to put on hold <laughs> but I will show you where I am at the moment so this is being kept in my Clara Rose Crafts bag. This is an older one of hers. Um, again, I'll link to her in the description below. She is another seller on Etsy. Um, this is an Alice in Wonderland themed one. Um, you can tell I like burgundy and um, I've had this for a little while. Um, yeah, a few years, I think. Um, but she also puts charms on the ends of her um, pulls, which I think is really cute. Um, so this is my hum levy shawl um, and I think that's pronounced correctly um, this is a pattern by Lega of fiber tails um, which has all these lovely little bees on it um, I'm hoping you can see that roughly um, so I am knitting this out of my own hand dyed yarn is a hundred percent non superwash merino that I've dyed in this gold colour um, and I have used 200 grams already and I've run out of yarn which is why it's on hold temporarily let me show you where I've got to anyway um, so yeah it's a triangular shawl um, it has obviously all the bee details and then a bit of lace to kind of represent flowers and I am on the section which is just garter stitch all the way until the end. Um, so I've used three, sorry, 200 grams of this yarn and I'm contemplating whether I dye some more and risk the fact that it won't match or go with a completely different color. Now the other color that I have in this yarn is green um, but I'm not sure if that's really my friend's jam um, in terms of what colour she would gravitate towards. She tends to go for blues normally, but I thought this was such a lovely kind of honey coloured shawl that I would go for this. Um, so let me know what you think in the description below. What colour should I knit the rest of this with? Um, like I said, I am a bit worried that if I try and dye some more yarn it's not going to match because it won't be the same dye lot and this was actually an error um so i don't know if i can recreate it um normally my gold color looks a lot more orange than this does at the moment um so i have a bit of a dilemma um i think blue actually would go really nicely with the gold um so if you think about it like that but I'm not sure um, and I'm not sure it really works with the kind of nature bee theme that I was going for um, but yeah or, or I dye some black which I'd thought about before but yeah I'm thinking about it it's not the end of the world if I don't have this done by Christmas um, I am not dyeing yarn currently I don't want to impact my lungs when I've not been well um, especially with a, a lung based virus so I am leaving it until I feel 
back to normal again which hopefully will happen in another week or so um so that is where i am with that project i have thoroughly enjoyed knitting this i really want to make another one i'm not sure whether that would be for myself or for someone else though um i will have to see and this i am knitting on higher higher sharps again um on 3.25 millimeter needles um i do recommend this pattern if you want a lovely triangular cozy shawl um in dk weight yarn and um you love the bee design because it's so effective and yeah i think before i was saying that i keep having to stop and have a look at the bees because they look so great <laughs> um so yeah there we are with that one that's whip number two next up is something that i have been knitting on for a while and is a long-term project and that is the star blanket by stephen west so unfortunately this has gone into the naughty corner because i was trying to knit this when i wasn't feeling well and that resulted in some mistakes um because i was tired and i couldn't concentrate on what i was doing despite it being quite a simple knit um so i am still on this garter ridge section but i have got quite far so you can see there how it's going to look this is the center and then it radiates out to um these points it is a very effective pattern um, but basically i've e increased and decreased in the wrong place um on the wrong row um so i need to do one more section of this garter ridge white and then the blue background again and then i'm going on to i think brioche section which I'm excited about but not excited about the amount of stitches on the needles once again and um, which is something I've been complaining about a lot um, especially because yeah if I'm stopping in the middle of the row I'm not necessarily remembering what I've been doing um, and making a mistake on a project that has 500 plus stitches in a row and having to rip back two rows is not good <laughs> not happy with myself but I'll do it eventually when I feel a bit more like forgiving the project <laughs> um, and myself for making that mistake. I'm making some progress at least on this um, and yeah hopefully it'll be done in time for next winter I don't know we'll see again it depends how patient I can be with it. <laughs> Um, this I am knitting out of Willow and Lark Ramble. Again, this one is also a yarn that is exclusive to um, Lovecrafts. That's the word. If that works. Yeah, Willow and Lark Ramble. Um, it's a DK weight uh, superwash merino wool. Um, and I've got it in several colours. So 112, which is the orange um 137 which is the grey the oh so many ball bands in here the blue is 135 which is like a denim teal and the white is oh, number 102 um it's just like an off-white so yeah, getting there with that, hoping to continue making progress with it once I get back to it. Um, and fingers crossed that error that I made will not be the end of the world. <laughs> um, but I need to figure out what to do and whether I can fix it easily or whether I do have to rip back two rows. Hmm. Let's see. Um, I am keeping it in a basket because there is a lot of yarn and um, this one was a basket that my husband got me off Amazon a couple of years ago I think or probably more than a couple of years ago because it was when I was first knitting and I wanted a sweater basket um so yeah it's got pockets around the edge um but I have a lot of yarn in here as you can see from the fact that I can only just pop it in the top there because I need a lot for a blanket um, so yeah that is 
getting there slowly. <laughs> I'll be so happy to be on the next section though. I've been on the same section for a long time. There we go. Next up is a new cast on. Um, so my craft group and I were thinking of making ourselves Christmas jumpers. So not necessarily anything too Christmassy, but something to wear on Christmas day. Um, and a few of them have done really, really well. I have not got that far, um, but I am knitting the Altheda by Jennifer Steingass. Um, and that is a sport weight colourwork yoke. Um, I'll get it out and then you can see it. Um, so I have knit a bit. Um, I mean, this is going to be the yoke section. And you can see I gravitate towards grey and blue. Um, I need to stop doing that. <laughs> knit in different colours at some point. Um, so yeah, it's kind of this leafy design like a lot of Jennifer Steingass's designs are. Um, I think I'm getting there with the yoke. I'm almost at the at the end point um, and then I've got to do some increases. Um, but I do love Jennifer Steingass's designs. So I thought I'd make one like one of hers um, that I had in my queue. Um, so that is where I am. The yarn I am using has unfortunately just pulled off there. I need to sort that out in a bit. But it is Pluto Lopi, which comes in these whirls or plates. Um, and it is a really fine kind of unspun yarn. Um, and it breaks quite easily. So if you pull, it breaks off. So it's very delicate. And the thing that I'm finding is that even if I don't need to be that careful with it, I'm intentionally being careful because I don't want to break the yarn. Um, and that means that it's much slower for me to knit the colour work because I wrap the yarn around my finger. Um, and I, if I pull too hard, I'm conscious that I don't want to break the yarn whilst I'm knitting it or cause a tangle between the two colours. Um, so it is slow going but I am getting there and I've been doing bit by bit each day. Um, and I think once I'm done with the colour work, the rest will be in this grey colour, which will end up just going because it will be stuck in it rather than colour work. Um, so I'm knitting this one, sorry for the crinkling, in the colour 1027. Um, it doesn't say specifically what it is, but this is the Icelandic... Um, single ply kind of unspun yarn um, it is quite fluffy which is which I didn't expect but um, I'll see how it goes once it's washed I talked last time I recorded about my arboreal which is also a Jennifer Steingas pattern and the fact that I didn't like the fluffiness of the orange yarn um, so it's funny that I've ended up with a fluffy um, Alfeda as well but I'm loving the way this is gonna look um I'm not sure I chose quite as well as I had wanted to in terms of the gray and the blue I think it might have been better with like a light cream or a um a kind of an off-white instead um, but that's always difficult to wear isn't it off-white because if you spill something on it it's definitely gonna show um but yeah I'm overall enjoying it and just need to kind of get going a bit more. Um, I doubt I will have it finished for Christmas day, partly because I need to finish my husband's sweater. Um, so I don't want to put too much pressure on myself to finish it off. Um, but otherwise it will be a lovely kind of new year jumper for me. Um, I have not made note of the size that I'm knitting, but I usually knit the second from the smallest. Um, and that generally is consistent with Jennifer Steingass's patterns overall. And this will be my third Jennifer Steingass pattern. I also knit the Winter Soul, um, which was my first colour work jumper in Cascade 220, which is holding up really well, and I'll probably wear that next time I record. 
Um, and yeah, like I said, the Arboreal, which was knit in Wensleydale Gems by West Yorkshire Spinners and is just a fluff monster, but I still like it. And I just need to figure out how to wear it without just molting everywhere um, and leaving orange yarn everywhere I go. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love this blue colour as well. It's just really varied and tonal, really nice. Um, but yeah, I'm learning how to use the Pluto Lope yarn and making myself a lovely colour work jumper at the same time. So happy to be doing that. This is also in a Clara Rose Crafts bag, another old one, which is a jumper sized um, bag with Peter Rabbit designs on it. Um, yeah, here we go. Um, so talking of Peter Rabbit, I will move on to sewing. I have finally finished the quilt that I was making for a colleague's daughter who was born in November. And that is this one here. So I got some of this Peter Rabbit fabric in these lovely pink and yellow colours um, and made it up into this lovely baby quilt and um, I will pop a picture in here of the actual finished size so that you can see it in all its glory rather than me just showing you the edge here. Um, I've used some fabric that I got from Hobbycraft which is a really nice uh, kind of pink colour pinky coral that I thought offset some of the colours in the other sections quite nicely um, so over here um, and I've backed it in a yellow dotty uh, fabric for the backing. Um, and I did quite a lot to this actually, um, or I learned quite a lot during this process. So the last quilt I made, I bound um, by hand rather than using my sewing machine, but I decided to do a sewing machine stitch. It is not the straightest or the best, but it's absolutely fine. Um, I've got a bit of thread there. Um, and I'm really happy with the result of quite a simple but really pretty quilt um, for the little baby girl. Um, yeah, so really happy with this so far. Or in total, now finished, so it'll be on its way to its recipient very, very soon. Um, I will just wrap it up and pop it in the post. Um, yeah, I definitely learned a lot from the first quilt I made and I used those learnings for this one, um, but I do need to still be a bit better at creating straight lines of the fabric around the edge binding. Um, I don't know if it's because my sewing originally, so when I'm sewing the binding on in the first place is off but it's not especially neat on the back. Um, so there are some bits where I'm going kind of like that, um, or at least the fabric is, the stitches aren't necessarily. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I'll continue practicing and see how I go. Um, what I'm gonna do over the Christmas period is do a bit more quilting, but do some smaller items so that I can get the practice in on something small that's not gonna take me a really long time to make. Um, yeah, but overall really really happy with this as a second attempt at quilting. I went back to Melanie Ham's beginner quilting video which has been amazing and very very helpful but I've also been watching the Midnight Quilting Show um, which is an I think a craftsy original um, and that's been useful and fun just to watch to be honest her piece together a quilt um, very very quickly and kind of go through all the processes that she's going through um, and all the different designs that she's inspired to make as well. So I don't know what's next um, in terms of this, I'll talk about some acquisitions in a minute that are related to that though um, and then that will be off to its owner very soon. Yeah, I'm finding it quite relaxing to quilt. Um, I'm learning about the different sewing machine feet, which is great because I didn't know so much about why you would change the sewing machine press of feet. 
um, and I'm definitely learning that. I've got a favourite, definitely, um, for doing a quarter inch seam on everything. Um, and it really helped when I was piecing the squares together and making the points line up. Um, so if you are a beginner quilter or you want to have a go, I recommend looking up yeah, at the quarter inch um, presser foot that gives you the nice seam. Um, and another one that I can't remember what the name is of. It's got a bar to give you a guide so that you can stitch in the in between um, two edges. Um, and that's worked so well for me. So finally, I am going to talk about some acquisitions. Um, and I have a couple of things that I ordered um, not too long ago to um, show you off. The first one is sewing related and that is this lovely woodland um, set of I think eighths um, that I bought from the Singer Outlet shop. Um, it's Tilda um, and yeah they're fat eighths. There are 20 of them and they're in all these beautiful colours um, and these actually contrast well actually go very very nicely with my and my husband's bedroom um, we've got kind of some red some green some light purple um, and some yellow in the curtains so I thought a quilt like this in all these different colours would be really really lovely and I was especially drawn to the kind of tree pattern I don't know if you can see it very well on the front in the red um, and there's actually a fox and a rabbit on the back <laughs> Um, so yeah, really looking forward to trying out a full sized quilt with these. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. I'll probably do squares because I think it will show off the busy patterns a bit more. Um, but I might put some plain sections in between all of them. We'll see. I'll uh, draw it out at some point. Um, I also placed an order with a yarn story and that's because I wanted the latest publication by Liner magazine. And that is worsted uh, which is curated by Amy Gilles um, who is La Guyane Aimé I think is how you say it um, and it's very yellow of course um, and it's a lovely addition to my Lane magazine publishing collection um, I've got 52 weeks of socks shawls and a couple of other ones of her books uh, stripes and um, strands of joy and then um, I've got Farewell Weekend and this one which are the smaller ones. Um, this has so many wonderful patterns in it and um, I am really looking forward to trying some of them out and they're all designed to be paired with the worsted weight yarn that Amy is producing um, from uh, I think it's Corrie Worsted um, but I imagine I can use any kind of worsted weight yarn uh, so I will look into what I can do with uh, the worsted weight yarn that I already have. Um, yeah, here's a f one of the cardigans that I really love the look of. Uh, just a double page spread um, with lots of texture. But yeah, I, um, I read the start of the book uh, the other day, so she's got a little statement, a little forward by Amy. Um, and I realised that she had also originally been a um, twisted knitter. So she was originally knitting her knit stitches twisted, um, which is something I also found out Andrea Mary or Drea Renee and Knits did, and I did at the beginning as well. So um, it's really funny how you find out these famous knitters actually started out the same way as you did and were making the same ma same mistakes as you which is really humbling I guess that you know everyone makes mistakes at the start when they're learning something and often you don't know you've made a mistake until someone points it out so someone on a forum actually pointed out that I had twisted my stitches on a swatch um, and that's when I realised I was winding the yarn around the needle the wrong way um, which also causes twisted stitches as well as knitting in the back loop. Um, so yeah, little fun fact for you. Um, 
Andrew Mary, Amy Gilles and me have something in common in terms of how we started out knitting twisted which made everything very tight <laughs> um, but I've loosened up massively now in terms of my knitting anyway especially after finding out that that's what I was doing yeah so I got a book that book from a yarn story um, and I'm really looking forward to knitting some patterns out of it um, I also got some coveted yarn which is a dyed by Dell's British Aran this is 75% BFL, 25% Massum, and um, it's non-superwash Aran weight yarn. And I'm going to make a hat out of it, obviously, because when I buy a single skein of yarn, what is it going to be? Uh, and this is in what they call crisp pine green. So it's a lovely, lovely green. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus. There you go. Um, yeah, so gorgeous dark green it's actually darker than it looks on screen at the moment it's blowing out a little bit um so it's kind of a bottle green um and i just wanted to treat myself to a single skein just to make the posted worth it for the book um and i'm happy i did i'm for some reason drawn to green at the moment i don't know what what is going on with that um so yeah lovely aaron yarn to try um and i also got something which I have another one of, and that is an um, Oh I Love Handles wrist ruler. So I'm actually wearing my other one now. So this is an actual ruler, which has inches and centimetres on it, uh, but it's kind of a brown leather, um, and I really love it. I also got myself a brioche one. Um, so this is in the natural colour and it has the brioche stitches on it so if you're knitting brioche you can follow that to give you the brioche pearl brioche knit um slip yarn uh, technique um so i'm going to add that to my wrist with the other uh, knitting ruler that i have at the moment um, and I bought this just because it was on offer and I thought it would be useful. Um, I have quite a small wrist, so the 15 inch, I think 15 inch, yeah, must be 15 inch, um, length is really good uh, for me. And they had some in stock, so I thought I'd contrast the darker brown with a light uh, tan um, natural colour. And I can't get it back in the tin. Um, yeah, so it does come in a lovely tin, which I tend to reuse for stitch markers um, because you can never have enough tins um, to keep your stitch markers in. So that is everything that I wanted to talk about today. Like I said, please do like and subscribe um, just to help my podcast be visible to those who might want to watch it. Um, I will be back in a couple of weeks. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be all better um, and able to talk for quite a while and hopefully I'll have some more finished objects for you um, especially because I'll be knitting some more hats as well um, but at least one sweater I'm expecting that's a challenge for me now um, so have a wonderful couple of weeks um, enjoy your crafting and I will speak to you again soon bye